All right, so today we're going to try and do a little bit of trapping. And the trap that I have is actually one of those Harbor Freight Specials. It's a 37 by 12 inch by 12 inch large animal collapsible humane trap. And I like to use this type of trap because it stores really flat and easy. And also it doesn't injure the animal. So if I'm catching something that I didn't intend to catch, I can always let them go. Now they're going to come in a flat pack box and they're pretty, pretty decent as far as price, about 20, 30 bucks. All you have to do is really pick up on it and it starts to self-assemble itself immediately. Now here's the front of the trap. This will be the trap door. What I'm going to focus on right now is the side and the back of the trap. Now at the very top you're going to have this swing arm and this is simply to make sure that this thing remains within a square cuboidal shape. So all you're going to have to do is kind of stretch it out and bring it down onto the sides and that makes your, uh, your cage a lot more sturdy. Here on the back what you're going to find is that this back door is not necessarily for the trap to actually spring but it's going to be there for more stability and also again whenever you're trying to extract whatever you caught whether you're re releasing it or whether you've uh, you've gone and killed it this is an easy way for it to go out doing so so you've got a big clip right here this clip also has a stake in it and we use that stake to push from the ground to make sure that nothing kind of drags the trap out because you can't, you never know what you're going to attract I'm going to use this clip and it is simply going to keep this door shut and so if anything's trying to scratch up against it or break into it it shouldn't be able to get, get through it the chain the stake push them down and uh, the pigs might come things might uh, go pushing around it but the trap should stay in the same area for the most part as far as setting the trap pretty easy endeavor if you can notice back here you have a long piece or strip of steel and that's going to be a push plate and that's how your trap's actually going to be sprung. The front is where the animal will actually enter and to get this thing to actually get ready you get to pull up on a lever, push back and pull up on the door. And so the door should be way up high here. You'll have a long rod on the side here. Let's see if I can't get this where you can see it. This rod is going to push back and forth you can see the push plate moving back and forth while I do this. And it's also going to articulate a swing arm that has a claw on it. And as I push forward, that claw is going to push up underneath and keep this door open. If I push up on the door or if I push down on the push plate, it's going to allow that claw to slide back and drop the door. So right there, that trap is ready to go. Now if I go ahead and down here push down, the trap springs. You have a secondary lever right here that keeps the trap from being opened up from the inside. And for all intents and purposes, whatever's inside should stay inside at this point. Again, to set this, I pull up. Looks like a little bit of a handle. Push back on the front cage. Pick up on both cages. I'm gonna articulate the swing arm forward. It catches. I let the pressure back down on the front and your trap is set. Now, as always, you need to make sure that this trap is in a, in a good place where it can actually function, where uh, whatever you're trying to ca catch is actually gonna come around quite a bit. So you're looking for game trails, places with water, places where the ground's been disturbed. Uh, I'm also gonna be using some kind of bait. A lot of times I'll use some cat, cat food, a granola bar, maybe a bit of corn. Uh, you wanna put a few pieces in the front, a few towards the back, and several back here where this push plate is because you want them to be around there long enough to depress on it and actually spring the trap. And this is the area that we've chosen for today. Uh, we have lots of coons in the area, a couple foxes, bobcats, uh, badgers, sometimes a porcupine or two. And you really never know what you're gonna find whenever you come and check these in the morning. Uh, please always check these. Notice that there's no water in these. So I check these every single morning. I don't want to have the animals out and about or, or stuck in this cage for too long. On top of that, you can always have something come and try and eat them while they're in the cage. And that's not good either. The, the reason for this cage is to make sure that you are trapping what you want to trap. And that if it's not what you need, you can go ahead and release it. Because we don't want to harm anything that, that doesn't need harm. But this trap's going to go right over here for today. Depending on your surroundings, a lot of times I'm going to go ahead 
and put this up against maybe a, a stone wall or some rocks or maybe some wood to make sure that the animals don't try and dig underneath it or push up against it. You want to try and funnel them into the front of the trap as much as possible and make sure that they're not pushing it over. Uh, I usually add the bait about right now. Make sure that you have nothing that's going to mess up the, uh, the closing of this front gate. And after that, these two once set will hopefully tomorrow, uh, or, or rather tonight, catch something. And uh, we'll have the next video on that. There we go.